What if the number you were given, your IQ, your intelligence level, your supposed ceiling was never a ceiling at all? Not at 18, not at 25, not even at 50. For a long time, the story sounded clean and final. Intelligence is genetic. You either have it or you don't. And all you can do is manage what you were born with. That story is comforting in a strange way. It gives you an explanation for why things feel hard. It also gives you permission to stop trying. But the pattern you see in the lives of the most influential thinkers isn't perfect genes. It's something messier and more practical. Albert Einstein was treated like a slow child. Teachers assumed something was missing. Charles Darwin wasn't a star student either, and he hated memorization and drifted through school like someone whose mind didn't fit the system. Thomas Edison was pushed out of formal education and labeled as unteachable. And then those same people became the kind of minds history can't ignore. So the obvious question isn't, how did they get lucky? It's, what actually changed? It wasn't their DNA. It wasn't a magical teacher who showed up at the last second. It wasn't a new brain. It was what they did repeatedly. How they trained their attention, their memory, their reasoning, and the way they handled difficulty. Their habits changed the way their brain operated. And today, we can finally explain why, because neuroscience has language for what these people were doing intuitively. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a set of habits that research links to stronger cognitive performance. Habits that can raise the quality of your thinking, expand your problem-solving range, and improve what people casually call intelligence. Not tricks, not motivational slogans. Simple behaviors that look almost unimpressive until you understand what they do to the brain. Let's start with the first habit. One, deep thinking without input. Most people assume intelligence grows by consuming more. More videos, more podcasts, more summaries, more information. So they keep feeding the brain like a machine that gets smarter the more you pour into it. But there's an uncomfortable truth neuroscience points to a lot of intelligence isn't built during consumption. It's built when the brain has to generate thought without being carried by external stimulation. When you remove the input, no phone, no audio, no scrolling, the brain doesn't relax into nothingness. It has to do its own work. It starts connecting dots. It starts simulating futures. It starts reorganizing what you already know into something usable. This taps into what researchers call the default mode network. A system heavily involved in abstract thinking, insight, long-range reasoning, creative recombination, and the kind of mental time travel humans use to plan and understand themselves. Einstein understood this in practice long before anyone gave it a name. He didn't spend his best moments collecting facts. He ran thought experiments. He didn't always calculate, he imagined. What happens if I chase a beam of light? What happens if gravity bends space? He would walk alone for long stretches. No notes, no books, no constant referencing. Just uninterrupted internal work. That's not laziness, that's training. Modern research lines up with this. People who regularly engage in undistracted, internally driven thinking tend to perform better in problem solving, strategic reasoning, and measures connected to creative intelligence. Because when you force the mind to operate without a crutch, it learns to stand. So here's the habit. Made practical? Take daily thinking walks. No phone. No music. No input. At first it will feel boring. Then it will feel irritating. Then if you stay long enough, it turns into something else. You start getting clarity you didn't know you were missing. And that discomfort in the middle? The restless urge to reach for stimulation? That's not a sign you're failing. That's the moment the brain is being asked to do real cognitive work instead of being entertained. You're not wasting time. You're rebuilding the engine that creates insight. 2. Struggle before help. Highly intelligent people don't rush to answers. They don't treat confusion like an emergency. They delay assistance. This is what psychologists call productive struggle. The process where the brain tries, fails, adjusts, and retries 
which forces deeper neural engagement than passive explanation. It's the opposite of what the modern world trains you to do. The modern world trains you to erase friction instantly. You hit a wall, you search. You don't know something, you ask. You feel stuck, you escape into an answer, and you do get the solution, fast. But your brain didn't build the pathways that produce the solution. Benjamin Franklin used to train himself through this exact mechanism. He would read an essay, then put it away, and try to rewrite it from memory. Only after struggling, after feeling the limits of recall, would he compare what he wrote to the original. That gap between what he thought he understood and what was actually there forced his brain to retrieve, reorganize, and refine. It wasn't about copying. It was about strengthening the internal structure that produces good thinking. Brain imaging research supports the logic. Struggle activates deeper networks than passive instruction does. When you wrestle with something, the brain has to search for patterns, test frameworks, and correct itself. That process is expensive, so it leaves a trace. It becomes learning you can actually use. This is why instant solutions feel productive but disappear from memory. You borrowed an answer. You didn't build one. So here's the habit. Before you ask for help, write your best answer. Even if it's wrong, especially if it's wrong. Because the point is not being correct immediately. The point is forcing your brain to attempt construction. Struggle is not evidence of low intelligence. It's the mechanism that builds it. 3. Writing to think, not to record. Most people write like storage devices. They write to save information. Smart people write to see their own thinking clearly. Leonardo da Vinci didn't write neat essays. He wrote questions, sketches, diagrams, fragments, contradictions. His notebooks weren't organized like school notes. They were alive, like a mind in motion, interrogating itself. Because writing does something your brain can't fake. It slows your thoughts down enough to reveal what's missing. When an idea stays in your head, it can feel complete while being vague. The moment you try to put it into words, gaps appear. Weak logic shows itself. Undefined terms collapse, hidden assumptions become obvious, and that's the point. Research from places like Princeton and UCLA has shown that writing, especially by hand, can improve conceptual understanding more than typing or reading, because writing is thought made visible. It forces precision. It forces structure. It forces you to notice what you don't actually understand. So here's the habit. A daily thinking journal. Not, what did I do today? Something better. What do I actually understand right now? What confused me today? What idea feels unfinished but important? What am I avoiding thinking about because it's mentally uncomfortable? Intelligence grows where thoughts are examined, not collected. 4. Building mental models. People with high cognitive performance don't just know facts. They understand systems. They carry frameworks, mental models, that let them predict what will happen, explain why something happened, and transfer insight from one area to another. Charlie Munger described this as a latticework of mental models. Physics teaches cause and effect. Biology teaches adaptation and survival trade-offs. Psychology teaches bias and self-deception. Economics teaches incentives and unintended consequences. When your brain learns across domains, it becomes flexible. It becomes less trapped inside one style of thinking. This is closely related to what researchers call transfer intelligence. The ability to apply ideas in new contexts instead of memorizing isolated information. It's why polymaths dominated the intellectual history of the world. Aristotle. Leonardo da Vinci. Goethe. They weren't randomly gifted. They built a wide internal toolkit so their mind could move. Modern research supports the same theme. Cross-domain learners tend to show higher fluid intelligence, the ability to reason in novel situations, not just repeat what they've seen before. So here's the habit. Every week, learn one concept outside your field. Not deeply. Not for status. Conceptually. Learn it like a mental model you can reuse. 
because the brain gets smarter when ideas start connecting. When one concept becomes a lens for another, when patterns repeat across different worlds. You stop being someone who knows facts. You become someone who recognizes structure. 5. Deliberate Memory Training Memory isn't separate from intelligence, it's foundational. If your memory is weak, your reasoning slows down. Not because you're not smart, but because you can't hold enough pieces in mind long enough to build something complex. Nikola Tesla could visualize entire machines, rotate them mentally, test them in his imagination, and refine them without touching physical parts. Ancient scholars trained memory deliberately because they understood something modern people forget. A sharper memory creates faster reasoning. It gives your mind a larger working space. Techniques like active recall, spaced repetition, and visualization don't just store information. They reorganize networks. They make retrieval faster and more reliable. MRI studies on memory-trained individuals show denser, more efficient brain connections. Evidence that memory training can alter the brain's functional architecture. So here's the habit. Recall before review. Before you reread notes, try to explain the idea with no notes. Teach it out loud. Write it from memory. Sketch it. Because the moment you try to retrieve, you're strengthening the pathway. And that pathway is what makes knowledge usable under pressure. Memory is not a talent you either have or don't have. It's a trainable skill. 6. Protecting Cognitive Energy Smart people don't try to think all day. They think when their brain is strongest. Charles Darwin worked only four to five focused hours per day. The rest wasn't wasted. It was walking, resting, reflecting, allowing the mind to recover and integrate. This matters because chronic stress, sleep deprivation, and constant stimulation damage executive function. One of the core components underlying what people measure is IQ. Your brain doesn't upgrade during constant hustle. It upgrades during recovery. So the habit is simple and most people ignore it. Sleep deeply, move daily, get sunlight, allow boredom. Because boredom in the right dose isn't weakness. It's cognitive recovery. It's the nervous system returning to baseline. It's the mind clearing its noise so it can do higher order work again. Intelligence is a system. And here's the truth most people resist. IQ doesn't increase through hacks. It increases through habits. The kind that look unglamorous, repetitive, and almost too simple to matter. The greatest minds in history didn't chase intelligence like a trophy. They built environments and routines that allowed intelligence to grow. If you want to think clearer, learn faster, and build a stronger mind, start with habits, not information. And if this video changed how you think about intelligence, share it with someone who still believes IQ is fixed. And before you leave, write one word in the comments. The habit from this video that you know you need the most right now. And now, if you're looking for hobbies that genuinely make your brain stronger, your next step could be watching this video.